Oh, hello! Yeah, we back. We back. We back. We back. Now, I want y'all to take a look ever so heavenly at the fucking chapters because apparently you can't follow my train of thought long enough to listen to me which is part of the problem that we're going to discuss today let's turn this sucker up okay okay all right the last time we spoke like this, I told you I need days off from capitalism. And y'all fuck with the vibe. But, pray tell, why is capitalism so bad then? Why would I make a video talking about how bad capitalism is if in fact I'm just making the shit up? Got my fucking Pokemon trainer shirt on Cause we out here catching If you're new here And you're watching this on YouTube Hit the like Hit the like Hit the subscribe Hit the bell Damn near burnt my whole house up Capitalism. You know what it is. I know what it is. This video isn't meant to explain capitalism to you the way you know it, though. This video is made specifically for me to be able to communicate to you what it costs to be a free person in American capitalism. We're not talking about any other country's worth of capitalism. We're not talking about the effects of that shit in other places. Do I look far in British to you? Do I look far in British? Do I tea and crumpet? No, right? All right. American, black, Amer African, Amer figure it out. Anyway, anyway, before I launch into my tirade of how tired and angry I am, let's set some ground rules. If you watch this video past the four minute mark, that means you've heard these ground rules so good. Number one, leave a fucking comment. Don't disagree with me because these are all sick. I'm going to have the lukewarmest of takes here. Lukewarmest. If you disagree with this, you just, you don't like, you just, you, you, you don't like minority. Something wrong with you on the other end. All right. This is being done live on my Twitch channel. So I have to ignore my chat because I will get derailed once I get into this because I'm going to say a lot of shit. I'm sure some of them are going to be like, but could you elaborate? And I can't because I'm tired of elaborating. I'm tired of being looked at as the dumb person in the room because of my follower count, because of my skin color. There's a whole thing I, we, I can show y'all that. We'll get into that in another video much further down the line. Now that we've had our four minute intro explaining what this video is going to be let us my good friends play the motherfucking game all right let's play the game the price of existence chapter one shit is so corny this shit is so lame chapters just follow what i'm saying anyway price of existence in this country, we think of capitalism as the equalizer to the market forces that determine prices. We live in a consumerist age. We've always lived in a consumerist age. It's just at some points in American history, there weren't that many things to consume. Light bulbs didn't have 16 different companies all producing them all for a dollar. Like, you got something, it lasted. We know from other videos and other uh, texts that you can read that things 
were designed in a specific way to fail more often, therefore the consumer would buy more. It's the reason why they don't just sell you a lifetime subscription to fucking laundry, because everybody would be using the laundry machines, and even though that would make people a lot of money, that would cut into the laundry, uh, laundry detergent business's profits. It's that dumb. Like, you can think about it that minimalistically. Why are there 18,000 different companies making bread? What's the difference between whole wheat bread from Sara Lee and whole wheat bread from... Price. Quality, right? They're, you're going to say it quality? If Maseratis were $10, everyone would have one, so the quality of the car would drop because they need to be able to make profit on the car? Keep going. It costs to exist in this country. It costs to exist even more for those not disposed with wealth from the beginning. These are truths that no one can deny. It is the reason for the infighting between social classes. Nobody's that fucking stupid to not get that. But maybe, but just maybe, you need a deeper analysis. That's why this is chapter one. A person decides they want to move and get a new job. This person also has an illness that flares up every two days. What job is hiring them? They find a job that hires them with a pretty nice wage, except it's 10 miles away from the nearest hospital. They must now find living quarters that is both equivalent to getting to the hospital on time in case the flare up is bad, and close enough to the job that they're not traveling a super far distance having to get up earlier every morning. Because right now at the job that they work at, even though it pays less, it's two blocks away from the nearest hospital and their home is also a quick train right away. In this economy, in this society, yes, I'm using the Joker line. In this society, we are born and bred to understand certain truths. There are certain levels of, of work. There are, certain, there are certain things you must achieve in order to feel like somehow you are successful. And these successes are starting to become specifically linked only to money, monetary value, monetary value. The price of existing within this country is so bad, is so dormant, is so scary, is so unfigurably unimaginable. That somehow we've deluded ourselves into thinking that it's normal. We ask ourselves questions like, why would I want to pay $15 an hour to a burger flipper when a teacher's salary is only $18 an hour? I don't know, but there are no teachers businesses that are making billions of dollars owned by teachers. But there is a McDonald's worth more than billions of dollars, and you still getting a Big Mac for six thirty nine. What's more important, your child's education or your child's hunger? I'm gonna tell you right now, it has to be the hunger. You can't win on the on the education argument because if the child doesn't eat, they die. They can grow up stupid. They can't grow up without food. Fair enough. These are dumb analogies. And you want a little bit of a smarter one because you are more of the intelligent type. You're looking for something to agree with. Here, let me give you the utmost, the, the infallible defense in this argument that I am making that it costs to exist in America. If dental procedures are so expensive that most times out of not poor people cannot scrape together enough money to pay for them and insurance doesn't cover it and dental issues can lead to longer lasting issues including death how on earth would a poor person apply for medical insurance and not have dental covered why would that be a thing 
where are they supposed to get the money from? Work hard. I'm working to save my life. My dad said to me the most damning thing I ever heard in my life, and this is where I'm going to get personal. Because apparently in the political space, especially on Twitch, you make it personal and nobody understands you. You bring in facts, charts, numbers, economics, all of a sudden you're the most agreeable person ever. Let's try this. He said on the phone, not to me, I should say, he said it to his friend on the phone. He said to me, oh my fucking God, I still am going to go to work tomorrow, even though I've had this pain from my colonoscopy that just won't go away and it's hard to breathe. That man is 68 years old and says, I still got shit to do. These bills don't pay themselves. Here's where you might say, well, Marquise, if you was more on your shit, you could be paying for everything and he wouldn't have to go out and work. Yes, but my dad's not that type of person. You see this? You have to endue or you have to imbue a tone on top of your generalizations. You have to make sure that both the people you are referring to in this situation Both these people are able to, in one sense or another, have the ability to be perfectly fine. You throw in one cancer patient and the whole shit go wrong. It costs money to exist. That's just the medical side, the food side. Why are people not buying more organic and eating healthier? You know this argument. You know how the neighborhoods are set up. Why is there a liquor store on every corner? If black people really cared, they'd be opening up organic. It don't make money because we don't have the money. I don't know what you think this is. Do you think this is a fucking game? Do you think this is Monopoly? Do you think people don't care? Yes, McDonald's is bad, but hell no. If I could feed my entire family living in the fucking house, the apartment that we're in for $20 versus having to spend $35 for admittedly a healthier meal, then having to come home after a day of work, cook that shit, read my kids a story, help them with their homework while I'm cooking, put them to bed, and then have an hour to myself before I gotta get up for work the next morning, which is not only implied by just leaving my house at eight o'clock, I gotta leave earlier because I don't wanna catch the rush hour, I gotta drop my kids off at school, so I gotta wake up even earlier. By this point, I only get four to five hours of sleep because the schedule itself demands it. In what world is that producing a productive human in what world in what in what universe of yours is she not paying her literal life just to exist and i am advocating that maybe it either shouldn't cost that much or maybe she should have the ability to make more so in order to make more we have to solve some of her problems Since the communities themselves do not have the fucking funding because people somehow listen to me and say you go all over the place when I literally looped a five minute argument back to the main point. Because these communities don't have funding, they are immediately destroyed from being able to take care of themselves. Because of that, they must either receive funding from the state, their local state or the federal government. Local can't give a shit because take a look around. State don't give a shit because, well, at least in my situation, we make them more money than the entire state makes, so it really don't fucking matter. Only one option left, right? Only one. BSTNSTRNG95. Only fucking one. Did you die? The federal government. Hey, take a look around! What the Fed doing? Nothing. So now these people are out of options. There's got to be a way to make money within this system, within the roadblocks painted for us. Just work hard. 
just work hard even though universal child care would solve that lady's issue of needing to take her fucking kids to school because maybe there could be a carpool or an ID or something or a and this is where it gets funny oh I was waiting for this one a bus system that could take kids so that way I don't gotta think about it I could get more sleep make me more productive at work make me more in line for a promotion and here's the caveat of why it costs to exist in America. Because you're not the only one doing that. And the problem is, is that you people see the corporate ladder and think that corporate ladder exists all over the place. The, the, yo, the overturn of employees at fucking Amazon is so massive that you using that as they give all the jobs in the world. Great segue. Great fucking segue. Great fucking segue. Great fucking segue. Let's talk about it. Chapter two. Chapter two. Chapter two. Mom and pop shops and minimum wage. So, we just spoke about how there are certain solutions to people's intermittent problems with the speed of how capitalism rewards them. That speed can only be enhanced by monetary value. It does not matter what you bring to the table. If you have more money, you have a better shot of finding your resources faster than the person who doesn't. That is just in a reality across the world. that brings us to an interesting quandary if everyone's doing it and these jobs are, are clearly not paying enough well then why don't you just start your own business right that's the that's the key line here why don't you try finding work wherever it might be and generally, most of the time, when you get to mom and pop businesses, they're really referring to small businesses or businesses with less than like a ton of employees and a chain of restaurants or a chain of stores, which even in that regard, you can still be considered a small business, but we'll get into that in another video somewhere down the line. Somebody's got to do the work. Someone has to do it. So you end up working for one of these small businesses and they pay minimum wage. The consistent argument has been that if mom and pop shops, if small businesses raised wages, they wouldn't be able to afford it, so they'd have to raise prices. Then people wouldn't be able to afford their things, and therefore, that small business would close. Raising the minimum wage would price them out. That's your fucking system, though! Holy shit! Like, this chapter is gonna be so fucking small! Your biggest argument is that people shouldn't raise the minimum wage in general because it would raise prices. But that's your market. You can't have all the other markets going up and then to loop back to point fucking one. It literally costs to exist. You want a profit, right? Who are you appealing to? Multiple customers who will spend 10 to $15 per their trip or one to two customers who are going to spend two to $3,000 per their trip. What is your line of business? If people work for you and can't pay their rent, they're going to have to find a better job, which means you will need to find another person willing to take that. If all of us can't pay our fucking rent, then the rent and housing economy priced out small. How do you not get this, yo? How is this not clear to you? So let's work on a solution to that. Because this goes further than just small businesses. This goes to almost every business. The price of living has, the price of existence has gone up. Why would I work for a company that doesn't care about my, my fucking side hurting and me having problems, but if I die, they gonna replace me in two weeks. You see what I mean? They don't give a shit about you. But mom and 
pop shops do? Why would you do that to them? Why would you price them out? That's your economy. Either make shit cheaper so the minimum wage can afford something and you open up all these new opportunities of people that can finally afford to live on that wage, therefore being able to work these jobs at that wage or help them out. Bridge the gap so people can acclimate to spending more. But if they spend more, prices will go up anyway. That's your system. Late stage laissez-faire capitalism. Nobody gives a shit about poor people because they don't have the money to make their voices heard. That's the problem. The problem with thinking of small businesses is that the big businesses that have all these workers who can afford these benefits and whatever, price them motherfuckers out of the job, of the worker network, the worker wage, the worker um, identity. They price themselves out of the worker economy. That's why gig working is so popular. I can justify my hours because it doesn't matter how fast or slow I do something. As long as I'm picking up jobs, I'm making the same money. I don't have to worry about somebody taking uh, random taxes out. I don't have to worry about somebody stifling me for my paycheck at the end of the week. I don't got to worry about them not counting my hours or firing me. I don't have to leave and not feel comfortable with what I do based on how this person wants to treat me on this day. It can sometimes happen, especially in a gig economy, especially with Uber and Lyft. Like, you have to get harassed all the time. We're not arguing that. This is a generalization. And if you haven't been here yet and you don't know or you just skipped through this video and got to this point, we already said in the beginning that you must add tones to your generalizations, which I am adding. Which is funny. Which is just so funny to me. Which is just so drowning to me. Which is just so, like, weird to me. On earth, how could it be possible? How, how, how can it be possible for you to both justify a corporate takeover of the, of the working economy and not understand that with minimum wage not going up, that things are, like, a problem for people to afford? You complain about the small businesses, but the small businesses, yet again, to repeat myself, have been priced out by your economy, the rich person's economy. Because if poor people could dictate it, everything would be lower. That's why people enjoyed living in the conditions in which they lived in, in the hood, and dealt with all the, the shit that we was dealing with, that we're still dealing with today, because at least we weren't, like, getting priced out. I can afford this. Not if you raise the fucking ceiling, if you raise this, if you raise the floor, sorry, if you raise the floor and everyone just gets better jobs, you still have the same problem. You need people to do the jobs that you won't pay enough for. Remember the entire argument of essential workers? Those are your mom and pop stores in theory, right? Like those are your, the essential workers, they're the ones that do the shit you don't want to do. And when they ask for more money, because clearly by title of the government itself and all the people fucking clanging and clanging the pots, clanging and clanging the pots, you care about those people. Those are the people who are dying, though. Nobody can find anybody to work. That's because they're dead. That's because 152 people I know are dead. And 18 of them, I was going to do that shit on my hands. Oh, my God. 18 of them off the top of my dome are the exact people that people right now are arguing shouldn't have more money to do their job. Died on the job or from the job. All COVID deaths. 16 I don't even know how the fuck they died because I could have sworn we said that that shit was good on healthy people, but that Delta was cracking heads. That Delta was really smoking. Which brings me to my next point. Which me brings me to my next point. I love these segues. I didn't even plan this shit. I'm just that fucking good. You're going to respect me when you come here anyway. <laughs> Corona just been a thing that we kind of like acknowledge, but don't really acknowledge, you know? 
all that shit that we talk about, like, and if you were here for my link for the video that followed this, I need days off from capitalism. You remember my big exclamation at exactly six minutes. We not even post. The pandemic is worse now than it was in March of 2020, and we were shutting shit down. Two weeks to stop the spread. Except, like, for all the people that we have to keep moving, because if we don't keep those people moving, society will collapse. Society will collapse. We don't have enough safeguards in place to make sure everybody got what they needed. Nah, y'all gotta go out there. If you catch corona, good luck, bro. Good luck, bro. You know, I had somebody tell me, I had somebody tell me right out their fucking mouth, right out their fucking mouth, that, like, like, if corona's so bad, how come we're not seeing bodies dropping on the street? Like, you reacting to this with this much, like, vitriol. You're reacting to this with that much skepticism. You angry at people who take corona even remotely seriously. But if you think we have zombies out there, you think you wouldn't be freaking out and you'd be listening to what needs to be done? Okay. 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 No, you're fine. Now you're fine, kid. You're fine. Speaking of kids, <coughs> speaking of kids, let's ask a question. Because I feel like it's been a while since I've asked you a question. Before Corona, way before Corona, wait, wait. Say 1990. Fuck it. 1991. Just, just for my babies turning 30s, you know, in their 30s now and shit, 31. I'm going to hurt y'all feelings the most. There was a point in time where you didn't have an Indeed page or a LinkedIn page or could just send your resume all over the place. You had to go in person. You really had looking through the wanted ads for jobs walking around hey job hey hey jim hey bob oh jerry have you heard about anybody hiring lately they used to hand you paper applications if they if they were looking for somebody and you were in, and you were interested deep back we was really doing that. I did it. 2002. I was motherfucking nine years old. I did that. That's when I found out about child labor laws. I'm so dead ass. I am so dead ass. That's when I found out about child labor laws. It was right around the time that I was nine and I thought, I want a job because I want to play video games and I want to be able to buy the games. Little did I know that I was talking about my dad's like necessity need to spend our money on other things. That weren't productive. But for the sake of argument, for the sake of the class, for the sake of the, of the video, what this got to do with the price of capital, the price of freedom and capitalism, right? Capitalism restricted the movement of jobs to online people who now can use algorithms to determine if they even want to see your application. That's your capitalist movement. So people with money who can call someone on the phone and say, yo, I got this guy. Y'all need an accountant? I got this guy. This man can move bread for you. No longer will you ever get hit by any audits. This man gonna have everything on deck for you. Yeah, how much money he made you last year? We got 1.2 mil in overgrowth sales. Because he was counting the numbers and realized that we could have been making more of a profit in this area because we were already spending enough on something similar in another area. 
Yeah, man, call that guy in. What's his rate? I mean, normally it's 80, but could you throw him 120? I mean, if he's going to be making us 1.2 mil, hell yeah. The old job market does not exist in any form or capacity. I need you to listen to me because I feel like people on this fucking platform don't think people like me exist on this platform. So we're going to try this one time and one time only. I am telling you about society as of now. This is the use this clip specifically clip this and show it to everyone. This is a reality that needs to be addressed right the fuck now. The old job market in all forms across the entirety of the globe does not exist like it did 45 years ago. And I mean 45 specifically. 45 years ago, there was a type of way that you accrued wealth in this country. You did not need to worry about the 1% or the rich people or the celebrities. You had a way in. Now we can go into the civil rights era, we can go into Jim Crow, we can go into the middle point with the CIA and Operation Cointelpro, we can go into the, the war on drugs and the crack era, we can do that. We can talk about deportations, we can do that, we can put up these fucking barriers. But my understanding is that you wouldn't be stupid enough to argue against those parameters. So I'm giving you something to argue against. Because I'm a good faith person who wouldn't jam you in the middle of that argument. Even though I fucking should. The old job market does not exist. Therefore, society needs to adapt to the way we apply for jobs and the type of workplace environments that we have. I just uploaded a video that says be wary of propaganda that says people quit more because of toxic workplaces than pay. The pay would make the to toxic workplace disappear. If we wasn't all broke, just scraping by, I would come in my job happy. There's a reason I come on the Twitch happy, and I'm not even making bread like that off that. Because I enjoy what I do. I enjoy showing people what I do. I was a teacher. I am a teacher. Obviously not working because, like, they don't give a shit about teachers right now. And even I had to adapt to the difference that I couldn't walk into a school and put up a proposal for a certain program. You got to email these motherfuckers. You got to set up a meeting. You can't just walk in no more and be like, you're, they don't even want to talk to you like that. They don't even want to talk to you like that. You can't just say, hey, the last principal I had that I worked with when I was in, a, when I was in college, that worked that way. I could just walk in and be like, hey, I, I'm going to a meeting in 15 minutes. You want to uh, leave and come back? Absolutely. Now you got you to gotta email them, set up a meeting. What world are you in? What world are you in? Where, where is this not clicking? Where is this not making sense? If the jobs are different and the environments are different and you're pricing people out of literally their health care, of their job status, of their ability to travel, of their transportation, of their food sources, there's a, sh there's a, there's a, uh, there's a shortage, there's a, a stock issue, there's supply chain issues, there's a da da da, a da da You mean to tell me we don't got nothing in protection of that? If a virus that's even more deadly rampages another country and we have to lock down travel, you mean to tell me you didn't figure out a, a, a different place to be a vendor from? There's nothing in America? It's funny, I talked about this before in a piece I said, but I haven't uploaded it yet. You, you telling me that those solutions don't exist? So what are you doing? You don't have backups? I'm a wedding videographer, and I've got backups on backups on backups on backups. There's two of my backups right now that exist in the cloud, and they're both backing each other up. You don't got backups? Coronavirus isn't that bad. Why are you firing healthcare workers? I thought we needed them. Bro, you, 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 you have a group of healthcare workers that are saying that the vaccine is bad and they're quitting over that. 
And then you've got a group of healthcare workers that say, we didn't have proper PPE. You remember the garbage bags? They were treating us like shit, and now people, Omicron's taking over. I don't want to see all this. I don't want to see all this. We just read a quote a couple days ago. I don't want to be here for this. I've seen too much. This shit is traumatizing. And people laugh at that. Uh, you face trauma? You're a healthcare worker. You should expect it. All right. Let me go into your town. Let me go into your city and murder 35 uh, and shoot 35 people. Make sure they don't die. Make sure they don't die. And when that happens and they all get rushed in there, I want you to be a visitor. A, 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 a. I want you to get into the medical field so you can do visitations. And I want you to be there on that day. I want you to tell me what hospital you're working at. I want you to be there on that day. When you see all of that and you get traumatized by it, I'm going to literally put the gun in your hands and be like, ha, 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 ha. that shit's funny, isn't it? The old job market doesn't exist because every job has been radically changed by COVID, let alone the last two decades is what I'm getting at. For those of you who need a point to be said out loud, there is no back to normal. There is just this. And y'all trying to ignore that it's just this is a problem for me. And it's a problem for me because I know it's a problem for other people who talk from a position of empathy and feeling. You can argue your numbers and your statistics all day long. I've read the numbers. I read the statistics. That's what's leading me to these conclusions. The fact that I'm taking your information and reading it in a very specific manner Hoping, hoping to see your side of it and then never seeing your side of it bothers me. Because I'm wondering, what, or what are you drawing these conclusions from? Do you hate a certain group of people so you'd rather just justify it in any way possible? Because me saying help people helps you! And this leads us, this leads us, this leads us to the fourth chapter, actually, ironically. This helps you! And you know what helps you more than ever that you probably don't fucking ever pay attention to? Immigrants! Immigrants! That's your capitalism at play, bitch! That's your capitalism at play, bitch! That's your capitalism at play, motherfucker! What's paradigm talking about? Put it together, bro. Put the last three together. If you learning, if you're learning something right now, and you're on Twitch, hit the sub, man. Don't go see those ads. This shit gonna break apart in like ten minutes. They are gonna run you another ad. You don't want that. Hit the sub. We got emotes. For those of you on YouTube, hit the like. Hit the subscribe. I'm gonna blow your fucking mind. <clears throat> it costs money to exist. Therefore, people who can't pay the amount of money to exist can't be in a business, can't run a business. Sorry, it don't work that way. There's no reason why somebody would be selling hours of their life to literally go nowhere. I don't see how that's possible. Therefore, we have to adapt to a new way of a social economy where we can trade and share monetary value for our actions without depleting money from people who desperately need them. Therefore, we must adapt and change our job society and how we function within these parameters known as labor. Because what we produce is clearly worth something that we are not getting. So combine those. I wonder if there's a type of person who ain't grow up here, who don't give none of a fuck about this bullshit, who don't give a damn fucking fuck fuck about this bullshit. I wonder, I wonder if there's some poor Iraqi kid who comes over to this country with his two uncles and his younger brother and they open up a little Habibi shop. Nice deli, little smoke shop in the back. Don't give a fuck about none of this. I wonder if at any one point, any four of those people would be willing to take a job for that minimum wage just to have some money in their pocket 
while we go look for something else. If all four of them living together can put together an even greater than living wage, then we've got something, right? What if after a period of time, since these people are obviously working and paying taxes, if maybe we could make them citizens just based through that, because it's a simple system that shows that you are putting into the American economy, creating a profit, so you're one of us now. You live the capitalist code. You've completed the steps that I've listed that there are problems with. Matter of fact, let's go one step fucking deeper if we're going to go that far. If that is just a net positive, these people are doing the jobs, i.e. the farming jobs, etc., non grata, the, the, let's be honest, the hard labor jobs that y'all really don't want to do because y'all likes being sitting, y'all like sitting in an AC uh, corporate office in a little cubicle, let's be honest here. You don't want to be fucking picking uh, heads of lettuce. You don't want to be picking tomatoes for three dollars an hour. Like that's just you, bro. Like you just, I'm promising you, you don't want to do that. Why would you make an entire movement based on the idea that Im that immigration is bad? Oh wait, oh wait. You said no. You said it's not that immigration is bad. It's legal immigration that's good. Illegal immigration is bad. Okay. Pray tell, what makes stepping over an imaginary line all of a sudden an offense? Every situation, every person I've brought up in this chapter, you don't know if they immigrated here illegally or not. You didn't even think to ask that. Why is it that when I mentioned it, the bias kicked in, but you didn't react when I said it earlier? Because we are trained subconsciously through our propaganda to believe that anybody crossing over the border without following the rules is a bad person. There are approximately at least in this country 125 to 150,000 immigrants who are here legally but cannot get in contact with anybody to get their papers renewed or check on the status of their application if it is denied or held up. They are still deemed illegal immigrants. Whose fault is that? See, and this is where I get into the point of why I hate this type of conversation. Because it's going to go back to point one. Everything's back to point one. It costs to exist. If I got money, yo, I'm not even trying to be funny with you. If you can get the right people and bribe the right, like, right mindset of people, you can get your application in quicker. Matter of fact, let's not even be funny here. Y'all know for a fact that motherfuckers that be moving weight be moving that heavy heavy don't nobody give a fuck about their immigration status and let me punch you in the fucking gut cause I've been waiting to do this for this chapter it's a perfect segue <coughs> to chapter 5 anyway so whatever man even though I'm reducing this, I'm really simplifying this to a 2 plus 2 type thing. It's way deeper than that. Just thinking about it gets you in the mode to kind of understand the point of view. But you you want something a little concrete, right? You want it, you want something a little, you, you know, you know. Oh, I can punch. Oh, he punching and he's swinging. Paradigm swinging, spitting right now. That shit dank. Hey, can I ask you a question? And all the cost of defending your identity as a minority, as an immigrant in this country, how come never in this conversation did we ever bring up people who are white who immigrate to this country? Why is it that that's never a point of contention? can't be the taxes thing 
So I just brought up something about money. It costs money to validate yourself as a human being in America. Because God damn. God damn. God damn. So. That's perfect. Chapter 5. The race and vision, the vision of the races and healthcare. We touched on healthcare a point before. And it was fun. I go a little deeper into it though. It is common for people to bring up in the middle of this pandemic that those who die from it have comorbidities. Comorbidities. They are more likely to die because they are obese, because they are... Yeah, they really just use obesity. They have heart disease. They have all these problems. And you know what that sounds like to me? I'm going to take a quick second to, to divulge away from this long ass video to say, um, <laughs> you know what that sounds like to me when y'all say that shit? We should be teaching people to lose weight. Like, we should set up a fast food. It just sound like, damn, all these black people just keep eating fried chicken and watermelon and drinking chicken. Like, I hear that racism so clearly veiled because y'all don't ever deviate from the words. You don't say the same thing differently. You don't, you literally verbatim, like, go, like, keyword, 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 keyword. Anyway, that is part of the point of the vision of the racist, but... When we talk about comorbidities and COVID killing those more often than not, it really struggles. Like, it really, I re yo, I struggle with this. Please help me with this. If you're on YouTube right now, yo, this is where you start commenting. <laughs> yo, it really, it really fucking gets me that we talk about that as if fuck it they're gonna die anyway <laughs> yo yo it's so damning yo and i know so many people have made that point anyway if we taught people to be healthier maybe they wouldn't die from the coronavirus like i think now is not the fucking time yo <laughs> i just i feel like you want to talk about that right right now like you want to have that conversation like how about we solve the pandemic first can we can we do that can we can we do that can we do that can we do that can but can we do that though these people generally are also poor like you feel me and who generally are the poorest people in the country black and brown people my like minorities aapi my lgbtq like you feel me like it you're you're getting me here subconsciously ironically there is an argument that you could make that the people who are subjected to being outside are those who cannot afford to take time off of their job in fear of losing it. Those people work low wage jobs and not low skilled because they were essential regardless. Therefore, even if they were brain dead jobs that anybody could do, those are apparently are the ones that are tied to like the conditions of society. So let's not do that here. If those people are paid less and can't afford to take off during a pandemic, because not only is it their duty to keep the world running, but at the same time, we need them to keep our society intact and we don't pay them enough. Therefore, they're trapped within that situation. Therefore, they're more likely to see other people. What are the types of people who generally don't, who work these jobs, who aren't trust fund people? Who aren't people with generational wealth? Who aren't people who are so isolated that they have people do things for them? Tell me 
what type of people fit that description and be honest because this isn't a thing that makes you a racist for saying yes mostly black people black men black women women of color <laughs> like i don't know where you want me to go with this puerto ricans dominicans like there's a yo like you're not getting the problem that we're having here is that the conversation is so centered around everything being general that we forget that things can affect specific people in a certain way. There's a reason why the cocaine and opioid epidemic is mostly thought of as a white person thing, and the crack uh, epidemic is thought of as, and uh, uh, the yeah, the crack and K2 era is thought of like minority things, even though they're both epidemics that could be stopped with just simple education. Like you're not following the key guidelines here. I love those who are probably this deep into this video and have said something along the lines of that plays into healthcare. Ironically, right? The price of freedom in American capitalism is also not being one of these vulnerable targeted groups during any type of movement or moment ever. Black Lives Matter? I'm not a racist, I'm just white. I don't ever open my mouth about anything. We don't care about you. You see how I can make arguments against Black Lives Matter, but also still tie it into the fact that money, the price of being free, is the ability to sit atop and look down? Nobody going to Jeff Bezos' house and protesting. You'll be shot on sight, but why not? Why not go to his house and protest? We can't reach it, he live in a... It's like you're catching me, but you need me to spell it out for you. I want you to think more. These is bars I'm spitting. If they over your head, then whatever. But think. If this pandemic showed you nothing, showed you literally nothing, it should have shown you that it pays to be healthy. I don't have to deal with nobody. That's what they say. I don't got to deal with nobody. I get my shit delivered. I got a pool. I got a tennis court. I got a table tennis. I got a room for VR. I got a streaming room. I got this room. I got that room. I got acres of land. I could drive. I got a little driving course that I could drive to. And I'm 20 minutes away from another person who got all that and never got to leave. I'm good. Me, on the other hand? No, I got to go outside. I got to make that money. I just recovered from COVID. I got to go outside. I got to make that money. Or else I'm going to get a letter that says I owe fucking rent. And it's like, I know I don't owe rent, but now they gave me the letter and I have to prove that I paid for it. Like, come on, come on, come on. What? What do you not see about this that's in any form classist, if not racist, outright? These systems were built originally. All of it, all of it was built with the exclusion of anyone but white men. You know that because you know about women's suffrage and you know about like who won out of that. You know that because you know that there was a civil rights act passed. So you know these things, like you know that they're there. These are things I just, I, this is history. This is history. This is history. Okay, link those three things together. Link those three things together and answer me this question then. If all these systems were built before that, and then one day we were all like, yeah, racism bad. Wouldn't the things that we built these systems upon inside still have that code? Because, like, they're buildings and they don't know that we've changed society. No matter how many times you can make an argument about anecdotal cases of that person succeeding, that person succeeding, that person succeeding. The system is working as designed. It does not allow a flood. You do not have the connections. You do not know the people. You do not know the websites. Google is free, but like I work nine to five and my employer has told me to not be on my phone. I get home and take care of my two kids. Until they're old enough to take care of themselves, I probably won't get an hour or two of sleep and I'm not gonna spend that Googling where to go act. <laughs>
Do it on the weekend. Thank you for taking one of my days and saying that I get 48 hours to achieve my dreams. We all have the same 24 hours. I've literally explained to you why you don't. And I'm sorry to tell you this, but the majority, the majority of people who can claim that and also relax three days out of the week generally are white. And there's your facts and statistics for you. I don't understand how you didn't get that if healthcare breaks down for poor people, if healthcare breaks down for black people, if healthcare breaks down for women, if healthcare breaks down for trans individuals, if healthcare breaks down for poor white people, everything collapses because people can't do anything because they are crippled by their health. We don't talk about long COVID enough. Who's got the money for treatments to be able to try to solve that? Just get the antibodies. Why would you get the vaccine? You got to pay for the antibodies. The vaccine's free. You're literally saying, I'd rather put that thing in my body that I don't know anything about than that thing in my body, which I don't know anything about. Bro, vaccin vaccinated. Third arm. I got angrier. Because I was for eight seconds skeptical. What if it does do something? What if it does? It did nothing. It did. I felt better after. Maybe the 5G in my body uploaded. I have to contend with that type of thing and that type of environment and that type of thought process throughout my entire community. It persists within my friend group. I try to be nice. I try to explain things. I try to not debate them, but just say, hey, let me let me let me shave you down a point from there. Let me let me let me, let me help you a little. Let me, let me, let me, no. It's my opinion. I'm allowed to have my opinion. Then they die. And I have to cry. Because now it's my fault. Now it's our fault. We didn't help them enough. Now it's our fault. It's personal. Because people don't see me as the Hassan Abi, people don't see me as the white guy, people don't see me as the informed intellectual who robots around and is able to spit out multiple diatribes about the facts of the things and the way we speak and how we, like, sorry I don't speak like that. Sorry, I'm not a quick one who's able to d decipher your argument and break it down within five minutes while explaining to you why I think uh, if you're going to follow these rules, then maybe you're just stupid. And, you know, I don't really understand what you're talking about. Like, what do you want from me? People are dying around me and you're asking me to compete on a white man's board. Bitch, this my board now. This whole shit black and it's going to stay black. So you could imagine if the wealth disparity exists to literally separate racial groups because that's how it fell in line, you create model minority myths for those who are able to break that stereotype to keep them within one. We don't celebrate your culture, just what your output is. We love you. I'm going to go mad racist with this. We love you, James Yen. We love you, we love you, Jimmy Park. I hate that they do that shit too. Oh my god, every office. F Yo! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, I just unlocked the fucking bad memory. Oh fuck. Yo, every job I've ever been at, if there was an Asian person there, they always fucking said both their names. Oh my god! Oh my gosh, she used to do that shit with he he was fucking um Cuban. Oh my god, and he fucking did that shit with Randy. Oh man. Oh, that's gross. Oh, that's fucking gross. Oh, you people suck. <laughs> You people suck ass, yo. I can't believe I just noticed that. Oh my fucking god, you guys suck. The vision of the races of the races. That's the point we're making here. Is that everybody has a vision that is sadly tied to your skin color because the systems we live in re-echo that. It costs to be free 
in this system of American capitalism. People have to literally die to find a job to be able to afford some type of savings so they may enjoy their meager existence. And no one speaks out for them. And when you get somebody who gets as powerful as MLK, you fucking kill him. We need to live on in King's dream. The government gave you, hold on, wait, hold on, wait. The government has given you. Thirty two hundred dollars. A very generous point of UBI of of not UBI, sorry, UIB unemployment benefit insurance benefits. But then again, you also had to be working before that point, And they cut a lot of people off like and that system was so bogged down. People weren't getting calls back for like months. So they were really struggling. Even if they got the money later on, it's like that wasn't a guarantee. Some people never got their checks. Some people never got their stimulus. There's a whole bunch of arguments about how like we gave so much aid to people. But like that also is, again, the person. Oh, my God. They want facts and figures. But they say that shit was a lifeline for everybody. And it's like, yeah, including me, I agree with you. But like my neighbor didn't get theirs ever. Was I supposed to share my money with them because I'm like, like campaigning socialism or something? Like you, you I, <laughs> it's so dumb. And just like, I think people who got it thought everybody got it. And people who didn't get it thought everybody didn't get it. Like a lot of people did not get that anyway. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. When you talk about healthcare, you have to talk about racism because it costs to be alive. If I need a life-saving fucking thing and there's no payment plan or no insurance, they will deny you. Like they will you will be denied from necessary dental surgery. You will sit there with a toothache trying to save up money by working for your job. And again, if you say like an idiot, well, why don't you just get a better job? Yo, I've literally listed out all the reasons why the old job market doesn't fucking exist. The cause, the rise of the internet, coronavirus, um, the ability to create algorithms to decipher job resumes. So why would I even like, I'm not working in the, I'm walking into my uh, supermarket and asking for a job. Where am I ever going to be manager one day? Do I want to be manager of a fucking supermarket? Would you still treat me better if you realize I had climbed the ranks and been a fucking uh, 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 cashier slash baggage person and I made it up the manager? Nope, you still going to call me the N-word and you're still going to say, why don't I get my coupons off? And I'm going to be I'm going to have to sit there and fucking take that because you think you're better than me because you make more money than I do and I'm on food stands. But you told me, stay in the game, right? the ranks why don't you see me as important it can't be my job title it can't be the money i make because you don't know what it is it can only be the characteristics i can't change and that's what i can't change is my face and my skin color and my diction and my tone when i look at you so all of that in the five seconds in this imaginary scenario i've made up with this person i've made up just to get angry at it oh wait no that's happened to me but I wasn't in a supermarket. I wasn't a cashier. I was with high society. I was the videographer taking this wedding at this beautiful estate where every head to pay for food for every head is like $3,500. Just the beginning rental is 30,000 or I think 100,000. It's one of those two, I just know like uh, uh, yeah, I think it's 30000 just to rent it. Just to rent the place is 30000 <laughs> I want a dream wedding. Bitch, we can't even get our fucking, like, glasses fixed. Like, bitch, we getting married in the middle of a fucking Costco and that's it. Like, I'm clearing that shit out. That shit gonna be, you ever see a Costco without anything in it? That shit is wide, son. You will be scared. You think you, it's scary, yo. It is so scary. If you've ever seen a Costco empty, it is so scary. We getting married in there. We getting free samples during the wedding. We could go around and they could say, yo, we got grills and shit. You can literally take anything off the shelves and cook it yourself. Or there'll be a person there to cook it for you. Come on. That shit gonna be fire. That 
That shit gonna be fire. That shit gonna be fire. And yet again, if you are on Twitch right now, I cannot read the chat because I will be fucking stunlocked into answering any questions you might have. This is a video, a monologue that I go through. La the last few times I've done these, I've been watching chat, and I notice that, like, I make the points, but I don't make them in an order. And people are getting pissed off about that on my YouTube. So I'm telling them to suck my dick, but at the same time, I'm giving them what they want. You feel me? Like, like... It's, it's just it's them it's, it's the youtube community it's, it's it's weird people the people who subscribe and leave nice comments or like thoughtful comments or actual like introspective whether they agree or disagree we're not talking about you it's them rabbit ass trolls that be like oh my god you talk forever and don't say anything like here you go there you have chapters now you have chapters now now you've got fucking chapters in conclusion to recap this wonderful expose into why capitalism effectively prices out people. We, yo, it's like, what are you, what are you waiting for? Oh, climate change is really bad. Like these people got the bunkers and the materials and the research. You know that shit. You, you've seen them talk about it. They want to go to space. I want health care. There is no reason why I got a dude that's on the street right now in the cold. Asking people, begging them for a dollar, knowing mad people can't even spare that. While we over here saying, would you like to go to space? Just pay this money. That's light work. That's easy money. They could, those people could spend a hundred thousand and a hundred dollars and give a hundred dollars to a homeless person they see. They don't do that though. They don't run into homeless people where they're at. They don't get driven. They don't walk. They don't see. They're disconnected from reality. But we're not. We're not, though. There is no meritocracy. If just on the basis of social media alone, we can prove meritocracy only exists when people's only ideal interaction is to either give you money for it or to share it. The things we buy... We keep, I don't give a fuck about who made any of this. Because I don't know who made any of this. I don't give a fuck. Oh, but poor kids in, in different countries make your iPhone and it's terrible. By law of consumerism, I have to go on record to say I don't give a fuck. Now, I do personally, but can that affect my my active consumer no because i need to survive because i'm also in the same system i'm better i can talk i can sit here and try to make a twitch following and try to get enough money off of that but i'm still poor nothing's changed nothing will ever change unless we realize that helping poor people helps everyone. And that's strange that that's a political statement. That's super fucking strange that that's a political statement. Please help poor people out. Nah, they gotta pull themselves up by their bootstraps. You know for a fact that if everybody was, uh, was employed, that would be bad for the country. It's like, talking, you have to have unemployment. You need to have healthy unemployment. Like, that is a thing that you need to have. You need to have that in a stable, functioning capitalist society. And yet, and yet, and yet, and yet, we come to the end and the only thing that we've really learned here is that the world sucks, except for the positives. Oh, what? Did you think this whole thing was going to be a rant with no positives at the end? Oh, absolutely not. We did change the job economy somewhat. We began an experiment known as work from home, and most people started to wake up to the idea that maybe we don't have to go into an office to do our jobs. 
Now, these jobs, of course, are jobs in which these positions are, again, priced out to certain people who can afford internet, blah, 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 travel with this or that, yeah, exactly, blah, blah, blah. But being able to do remote work allows me to control my workspace, which means I don't have to travel two miles. We did change that. We did give, especially the youth taking advantage of this, we did give more opportunities for advertisers to actually give money to people who create content. Now, of course, this is a space in which we need to discuss racism, colorism, blah, blah, blah. But, like, it exists, and I'm not going to deny that it exists. Hey, that's a benefit. I mean, we make fun of Twitter for saying, oh, you've got super followers. But, like, hey, hey, Facebook gaming, YouTube gaming, there's a chance. Now, of course, within these spaces, we talk about meritocracy, how much you're able to put into it, uh, how much you could start with to make your stream look a certain way, da-da-da, this and that. But these things exist. Hey, positives. We at least did change our healthcare system. We did admit that some procedures, I'm sorry, some things didn't need to cost as much as they did. And we, st we started getting legislation to try to lower those prices. We did get a lot of people more enrolled on Medicare. We did get a lot of free initiatives towards certain illnesses that we didn't get before. Hey, benefit. We did realize that there was a possibility for global cooperation when it came to medicine. Now, of course, we fucking botched that and gave it in the hands of, like, the dumbest people alive. But, like, hey, we tried at least, you know? And that's a good thing, because a lot of what I've talked about today could be solved with at least some effort. Do I want complete, the complete absolution of poverty within three days? No, we're not getting that. Of course not. Do we need to have a conversation about individuals and choices? Of course, within environmental factors. But we did shine a light on the idea that things like this do affect different populations at different rates for different reasons out of their control. And since it ended up affecting the population as opposed to just individual cases that showed no pattern or trend, we can say that we have definitive proof that there's something that needs to change within the American ec uh, economic and social systems that we all depend on. That's a good thing. That's a really good thing. Does it mean that this change will come about? Does it mean that we'll be able to solve it now that we have the data of course it's going to take time but at least it's there it shouldn't have had to take so much sacrifice and so many people dying to get there and that's something we're going to have to talk about and embrace but it's there throughout this time more people were online while that didn't make the most people informed about issues the way they should have been it at least got people thinking. And through that, a lot of voices started to emerge that actually were necessary for people to start gaining some empathy towards certain situations. We had more time on our hands, whether we want to believe it or not, to at least take a look and actually ingest the stuff that we were reading and watching, as opposed to just meandering through, just hoping for some fun time. Some of us were worried. Some of us had conditions. Some of us died. Some of our family members died. Yes. We're not ignoring those things. This is simply about the price of freedom in American capitalism. And we did gain something from the ability for the, we, we also recognized that the government giving us all that money didn't really cause the problems that they thought they would. It did reveal that the infrastructure for those who already were on that or would need it was failing and crumbling, as well as many other infrastructures that we thought were standing perfectly Perfectly. So maybe, just maybe, maybe we've identified core components of these systems that could be changed. And through that, we might be able to provide some form of social equity among people who are disproportionately affected by certain environmental factors outside of their control. Good things. But we can't look at those good things. And that's why I hate saying the good part. Because for every good thing I've said, it's going to take so long for someone else to notice who has the ability to change that. That's my main point.
that the price of freedom in American capitalism is tied exclusively to wealth and or social power. And sadly, those two come in way too close with each other every time there's a revolution that comes about. Anytime a group of people have a great big thought, there's always that one center point. That center point, fuck it up for everybody. So are you saying, uh, Mark, are you saying, Paradigm, that Martin Luther King fucked it up for everybody? I mean, no, but, like, they killed him. So you see where I'm like, that one person made some people angry enough that he had to die. Like, they fucked it up. For, you see what I mean? Like, that one person fucked it up for us. Like... <laughs> Ah, uh, that's a funny joke. I hope people don't take that seriously. <laughs> that's funny, though. Like, it's like if it's not the one person, it causes a reaction for another person who doesn't allow them to create the change. Uh, 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 we have Bernie Sanders. Joe Biden fucked that up for us. You feel me? Like, you, you feel me, though? Like, you feel me? Like... <laughs> Now we got Joe Biden, Joe Manchin fucking it up for us. Like, you feel me? There's always a blame train. If these people worked within like one minute, I wanted gum, but now I don't want gum. <laughs> Folding that back up. <laughs> My conclusion, these are just thoughts. I like these monologues because these are thoughts that people, I don't, I don't see, I, I don't see putting enough like, care like it's funny it's comedical it's entertaining i'm gonna just rap to you because like i feel like maybe you don't need to hear it with did you know in 1957 36 percent of black males were actually unemployed at that time due to the stringent economic like do you want me to like say that like i could say that but <laughs> it's easier for me to tell you that it hurts to be black in america it hurts to be poor in America. You could be of any race. It don't fucking matter. You get priced out of things that can make your life better. And you're expected to beat that to get up on top of people, which would then lead to the absolute final point. The reason why the price of freedom in American capitalism is so steep is because at some point, whether you want to or not, in order to have that wealth or social power, you must extract it. You must be able to produce a good or a commodity that you can extract more wealth out of than what will be given to the people who help you make that commodity and or who buy that commodity. So, if I make something for 32 cents and I sell it for $10.32, I extracted $10 worth of wealth out of somebody else i must extract wealth and when you begin to extract wealth and never replace it the well runs dry and welcome to 2022 and the price of freedom in american capitalism i am paradigm i will see you in the next one hit the like hit the subscribe hit the bell to stay notified i'm on twitch.tv slash the underscore paradigm underscore shift share this video with somebody you think you uh would be down to like listen to probably like a long ass podcast i don't know how long this came out and fuck with your boy i'm on twitch what's up with it